Hello, hello, and welcome to the Coaching Business Spotlight Show. I'm your host, Kat Connect, and I'm excited to share with you soul-driven strategies that help you succeed in your business and your life. And today, we're going to take a look at how to integrate different modalities into your coaching business. So as coaches, we offer our clients a combination of personal growth and the support to accomplish the things that they want in life and work, right? So this was something I knew right from the start, that I wanted my coaching business to include a variety of personal, spiritual, and business growth modalities. So I started, the first thing I did was I combined business support for entrepreneurs with different kinds of personal growth training. One that I, I really, really love was I did some five element acupuncture training and I found it really useful for the entrepreneurs. Then when I was a relationship coach, I actually combined relationship coaching with business coaching because I found women entrepreneurs had a special challenge when it came to their romantic relationships. I really mixed things up when I went to seminary and I became an ordained interfaith minister. Uh, I loved the spiritual learning I received. I really loved speaking at churches and even uh, being a part-time minister for a while at my Unity Church in Ventura. And then I found, but I found there was something missing for me with that. I wanted to bring together the new thought philosophy with something practical. And for me, that's business training. And that's when I found my ideal niche. Working with coaches means I get to fully utilize that personal growth that most coaches seek for themselves and the business expertise that I have, and even relationship training that I can help the coaches who that's their niche. It hasn't always been easy to integrate these modalities. No. And I have had some flat out failures, <laughs> times where I tried to combine a couple of different things and it's like, yeah, it didn't really work, but I think there is a sweet spot where we can bring that mind, body, spirit together as coaches. So to help me explore this topic is someone who has brought together her own combination of modalities as a coach. My guest today is Tammy Delaney Plagowski. She started her career in healthcare delivery, which then grew into a 20 plus year, 20 plus year career in leadership positions, both public health and emergency management at the national level in Canada. And now Tammy is the founder and CEO of On The Level Leadership Consulting Incorporated, and she helps leaders, particularly women leaders, grow their confidence, establish balance, find their voice, and I love this part, get promoted. <laughs> How cool is that? Tammy has a passion for employee and leadership wellness. I'm going to underline that because she understands just how powerful great leadership is on employee morale, effectiveness, productivity. Uh, I think we could go on and on with that, right? How leaders have this big impact. And, and recently, Tammy has broadened her offerings to include the power of breath work and heart-centered coaching modalities. The breathwork programming that Tammy offers is transformational. We're going to talk about that <laughs> on the show. It's something she believes every leader needs to adopt into their life to bring their best selves forward and affect positive change on the organizations they are leading. And I am here to support that, Tammy. Thank you for, <laughs> thanks for coming on the show. Welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm really happy to be here. I'm super excited actually to be here. Thanks for the cool. invite. I, yeah. Yeah. So Tammy is a member of the Soul Driven Success Community of Coaches. And I have watched you grow, Tammy. I've watched <laughs> you grow your business. Uh, and you are such a passionate person. <laughs> really, you bring, yeah. you know, you bring your heart to this. And this recently, bringing this breath work in mm. to the women that you serve. So I want to mm. dive down into that in a moment. Mm -hmm. But, but I, 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 there's kind of a way I, I've been thinking about this. Um, I first want to look at what drew you initially, like, so you're, let's talk a little bit about your, your primary niche, let's say, and what drew you to work with uh, women in this area? Yeah. So thanks. So that's a great question. Um, I think my draw towards working with women, specifically women that are in that executive cadre or want to be executive growth 
uh, stream, you know, the 40 to 45 year old lady out there um, is because that's, that's who, that's who I was in my public service um, career. I, I struggled with finding mentorship. Mm -hmm. I struggled with being seen um, in some cases as an equitable partner to some of my male counterparts. I found that my life as an executive was a little bit more difficult in spots. And um, I just, even, even as you're saying this, you know, cause not some people, we do record the, the, uh, the video, but some people just hearing the audio, yeah. I can hear it was a real challenge. Like really, it was a real challage. Yeah. I, I experienced um, misogyny firsthand and, mm -hmm. And I found that finding um, female counterparts that could support me was not always easy. And it was actually through the it was actually through coaching that I that I found my voice. And I and it was through coaching that I made the decision to really follow this passion to help women grow and find their voice. Um, one of the sort of seminal experiences I had when I was leading the national stockpile in Canada for a couple of years is we were having some challenges with a particular leader. And in that time frame, what was interesting is I remember saying one day at my desk, kind of in a exasper you know, completely exasperated, tired, saying to my pod mate, I am just so done trying to defend. I'm tired of trying to lead in this environment. And her response to me was, well, if you don't, who will? And in that moment, Ooh, yeah, call on you yeah, forth, huh? <laughs> right. And I knew in that moment that I was obviously showing up with a certain voice and was representing mm -hmm. a lot of the women in our organization. So for me, coaching women in this space, it just makes sense because I know what they're going through, especially if they're coming from very host hostile environments. I understand what that feels like. Um, to be fair, though, I've also had some fantastic leadership as well. I don't want to make mm. it sound like I was always managed by really bad leaders. I actually had some great leadership and mentorship along the way as well, which is why I grew. Yes. But but yeah, this group, this group in particular, is, I'm very passionate about because as a Gen X lady, the mm. messages we heard growing up are not where we are now. And, and I feel the shift. You know, I feel the shift. I feel the shift in women. I feel the shift in organizations. I feel the shift. And the desire to allow us to be more authentically who we are intrinsically as women and what we bring to the table. And so I really want to support women in trying in finding that voice. Yeah, I want to and, look at that. I want to look at, yeah. at that. There's just something that you just said. So there's been a shift. This is good news. <laughs> Let's yeah. celebrate that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and and I don't I believe that part of that shift is because of work that you do and other um, leaders have done mm -hmm. to really take a stand for yourselves. So I'm just yeah. a little, I just got some curiosity. What, what is it when you help these women, you know, find their voice? What is the shift? What is the change they have to make in order to bring a change as you know, as I said in your introduction, for them to bring mm -hmm. a change to their organizations, what do they have to personally change right. themselves? I th I think the first is to really embrace the strengths that they bring to the table and not see them as weaknesses. That's the first thing. So building their own inner confidence and their own inner leader is a big piece of it. And the other piece is something I had to let go of. <clears throat> and I see a lot of women make this mistake is stop trying to play the game like a man play the game as you are and what mm. you bring to the table. And I find that um, I made the mistake of being too aggressive, thinking that's the way I should be behaving. And it, it didn't land. It didn't land. Uh, and I'm not suggesting women don't be assertive. I, I, I'm all for assertion and really speaking your voice and speaking your power, but it has to be done in a way that you're not trying to play, be a man in a man's world. You're trying to be you in the world that you're leading. And so part of it is in the huge part of it for me is internal. I have a client right now who her biggest um, need to be able to get promoted was that self-confidence was to be able to accept the strengths that she had and to be able to understand that she could leverage those strengths to move up. And I want to, I want to, yeah, I want yeah, to just underline this and this is true, I think, for a lot of different um, coaching niches. 
mm-hmm. that that there is this <laughs> there is this false idea that like you said, we have to play the game somebody else's way. And That's then right. there's that frustration, like, why am I not getting ahead? Or why am I not getting yeah. chosen? You know, in some ways, as you talked, I was like, it really makes sense. If a woman is not, and this is, is not being authentic, or a person is not being true to themselves, they are not going to, in a quotes, like get ahead in a way that's meaningful to them. Yeah, you're going to get ahead, but not not in alignment with your values and who you are as a person. And there's evidence out there, just do your research, and you'll find that there's actually evidence to suggest that when women lead authentically from a place of, of their own inner feminine creativity and, and authenticity, it, it's actually great benefits to the organization that they're in. You know, we send people on emotional intelligence courses all the time to try to right. raise the emotional intelligence. A lot of us women intuitively already have these skills. We already have these skills. So it's really about drawing it out and seeing it as a strength as opposed to a weakness. You're not being too emotional. You're bringing your perspective and your skills to the table Mm. and balancing that equation in the, at the executive table. It's, it's pretty powerful stuff. And, and that I think is a real key that Mm. balancing. And, and I want to really speak to the coaches who listen to this show right? The coaches who listen to the show, I hear this in my own community. I am a trainer for the Co-Actor Training Institute. Um, All the time I hear this, well, executives aren't going, this isn't the message executives are going to want. Executives, as if they're a different breed of people, uh, (laughs) really like all they want is, you know, to get ahead and to make more money. And they want you to, you know, support them in this very linear way. But what I hear you saying, Tammy, and this is really, there are two reasons I wanted you on the show. This is one of them, because I know you know this. That's just not true. That, not yes, true. like you said, well, I love, you know, in your in your intro, y- yeah, you want to get a promotion. Sure. Right? Who yeah. doesn't want that promotion? We, you know, we all kind of have, most of us have that drive. But there's another way to get that. That's what I hear you saying in the coaching you do and what you want for your clients. Yeah. And in some cases, it may mean looking at ulterior alternative organizations Mm -hmm. to where you're at. It may mean that getting promoted where you are is not the right place for you because of what you bring to the table. I actually, I agree with you. I think it's a false narrative that executives are not into this space. In fact, I was just at a at an event in Austin last November, where I spoke to many successful coaches and entrepreneurs. And I got to tell you that many of the entrepreneurs in the room are telling me, Tammy, there is a market for what you bring to the table, because even uh, I would even say all of my male counterparts and some of my most powerful coaching results have been in my male client with my male clients, Mm -hmm. because we're tapping into that emotional quotient that they are craving for, right? So I do think there is a market for this for sure. Hands down. Yeah. And, and an openness right. for this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is something again, I'm like, okay, great. Yeah. Cause, cause you know, uh, this is a, this is a way that the, this world can have, there's an impact to have mm-hmm. that's that coaches can have working with people, executives, people and organizations, you know, um, it's not that the individual coaching work isn't important, but this is really, really important as well. And so I want to now bring in this breath work. So this is mm-hmm. your, so I want everyone listening. So this is where Tammy's working. She's working with these executive women and some men and leaders, and they want to get promotions. They want to be authentic. Mm-hmm. I'm really curious, um, where, like how this came on your, mm-hmm. you know, I know the my words story. are coming to me. You know? Yeah, my story is sort of what brought me to breath work. Yeah. yeah. So a couple of years ago, I was doing my own shadow work, my own inner uh, work around some of my own personal challenges and areas that I knew I had to grow as a leader. And um, I was looking for modalities at the time that would support that inner healing process. I have some, uh, long story short, come from a, a background of some small and big T trauma sort of experiences as a child that marked me as an adult and affected how I led and mm. um, and how I behaved. And, and so I want to, I want to, yeah. I want to 
like, so as with most of us, <laughs> I just want to say yeah. to people listening, it's like, we all have some trauma, some emotional upset. I want to, yeah. you know, that's just, that's, that's a lot of what brings us to coaching is we've been able to face and overcome. So, yeah. yeah. So, so it could just be a at- bad, situ- yeah, bad situation that happened at work. It doesn't have to be a big T trauma that happened to you as a kid, yeah. but for me, that was the case. And so I was mm. looking for ways to, to further my healing, go deeper into that space. And I, I have a colleague that I did my master's uh, program with um, my master's of leadership out of rural roads with, and her name's Loretta. And she, she does this for, for a living. And I thought I'll take a session. I'll just, you know, I'll just try this. Mm-hmm. Maybe this will help me. Mm-hmm. And I took one of her heart breath sessions, which is just like a level higher than what I'm offering currently. And mm-hmm. I was absolutely transformed after one session hooked hook, line and sinker thought, okay, I have to figure out how to offer this to people. And so when the time was right, when I was well into my coaching career, I I reached out to Loretta and said, okay, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Sign me up. I want to learn how to do this. And so for me, breath work, doing this particular breath work pattern that I offer clients is about bypassing the, the monkey mind or the busy mind, the conscious mind. It's about bypassing that and really tapping into at the very cellular level, tapping into our, our brain and our hearts in a way it's as if the breath is a bridge hmm. between what you consciously think in your mind and what you feel in your heart. Like your heart has over 40,000 neurons in it. It wow. feels it has memory. It has wow. memory. So when you, when you integrate, when you see or experience something traumatic or stressful, your brain will remember the event, will remember the details of that event, but your heart is actually what feels it. Mm. And it's so intimately connected, but what happens, and I see this in leaders in particular, which is why I feel this space is so important for me, is that leaders kind of, everything ends here at the throat level for those yeah. who can't see me. Yeah, online, yeah, yeah, right. You know, it, I'm, I'm yeah. sort of pointing to my throat is yeah. mm-hmm. they stay in their heads and they don't think about how they feel. What is their intuitive sense telling them? They ignore that and just go with logic. And the problem is, is that we're whole beings who are right. working in organizations that are whole creations and organizational beings. So, so this breath work allowed me to go deep, make those connections, release what no longer serves, right? Mm-hmm. Release energy that I'm holding stories, old stories that I'm holding inside. And the breath work allows you to just do that deeper dive and breathe through It's not about re-traumatizing yourself. It's just about releasing what doesn't work for you anymore or welcoming in the things you want to welcome into your life. That's, that's the thing. It's not just about release. It could be about welcoming in or tapping into intuition. Um, I love, I I, I love what you're sold on this. I, I, and I know, so my husband Curtis had a session with Tammy, I'm just going to say, and he was on it, uh, that it's so important for us coaches to find ways Mm-hmm. to help our clients, you know, integrate in that whole body way. It's just yeah. hugely important. I mean, I, you know, like essential <laughs> you know, and what you're saying. So this mm-hmm. is my, my next, so what, what, how do you introduce this? Like what, how have you, this is going to be like a three-part question. Like how, have the, <laughs> how, you know, those kind of questions coaches aren't supposed to ask, you know, three part. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. how, how do they respond? Like how do you, how do you introduce it to them and go, cause it, it can sound to some people Ooh. like a little, like woo woo, a little way out there. Like, what do you yeah. even mean? And so I'm really curious about that. And again, to help the coaches who are listening to the show, like what are ways to introduce something so important that the people you work with really get it and say yes to it? Well, I think the answer is not simple, but the answer comes down to who you're talking to. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I have clients who are already meditating, very intuitive. They're already into sort of these practices. They've sort of, um, are open to this modality to begin with. They're easy sales in that sense, right? Because you can you can introduce, hey, have you thought about doing a deeper breath work um, process to kind of tap into you so you can get past that block that we're experiencing in our coaching conversations? And I've had one client say, yeah, you know what? Let's try it. I just recently had a, a client of mine who's just, um, he just registered for his first session next week, mm-hmm. who's very linear. 
very mm-hmm. left brained, right? And so I kept it to the science with him. We're connecting the heart and the mind through the neurons, the neurological system. We're going to activate your parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems. And we're going to use those to reset your nervous system through breath. Wow. And, and, and just when you, when you say it like that, it sounds scientific. It well, does. It I'm impressed, Tammy. It I'm is. Like, <laughs> it's scientific. That? Yeah. That... So this is supported by science, by the heart math yeah. Institute, right? This is supported by science and right. um, plenty of research has been done about how we connect the heart and our brains through breath, how we bridge that and how we can promote healing and promote healing. Isn't just about, let's just put some oxygen in the cell so we can fix a broken something or a pulled something. Healing is also about emotional healing because we have neural pathways in our brains that have been constructed because of these injuries mm. to our, to ourselves. And when you breathe in and let go, you're allowing your brain to rewire in some ways because you're bringing in an intention of healing and you're breathing out that, you know, the, the letting go of things. And it sort of starts that slow rewiring. It's amazing to me what people come away with after a session or two are like, wow, I really feel different. So I'll take me for example, since I've started doing this work, I'm less triggered and reactive to things that six months ago, going to the grocery store, busy grocery store. It's a great example. We've all experienced this. You're busy. You've got a busy life. You're at a grocery store. There's a hundred people there at Costco and they got all the samples out and you're like, oh my gosh, like if I have to see one more sample tray, one more time with one more person with a cart in front of me, I'm going to scream. I'm going to, right. But ever (laughs) since I started doing this, I find that I just don't have that same reactivity because my intention is to become more soulful and more connected with the softer side of me. So depending on what your attention is, you could really start to push the bar forward on pushing past blocks and things that hold you back or those recurring memories or the recurring thoughts or the recurring anxiety that comes in your mind yeah. every time something happens, the breath work helps you to somewhat start to push past that. And the way I describe this is this. This is a modality that does not replace therapy, for example. Right. I wanted to right? I, I, that I wanted was, make sure yeah, that's clear. We're not doing therapy. This isn't about going back in the past and revisiting childhood. And, no, this is not cognitive and, behavioral and, therapy stuff, right? <laughs> no. But it's complementary. And the reason I say that is because when you go to talk therapy, you're dealing with the memories that have associated emotion, but you're dealing with the memories and you're you're working through that with your therapist. But what this breath work does is it helps to integrate what you're doing with your therapist. So I work mm-hmm. alongside clients that already have seen therapists and do this as a compliment to help anchor what they're hearing in their therapy sessions and what they're working through in their therapy sessions through breath. It's really just about integrating. And, um, and I want to bring, yeah, bring that to the larger uh, conversation here, mm-hmm. because this is what I think gets in the way of coaches bringing this kind of modality in because there's this thought, oh, that's like therapy. I don't know. I mean, it's just ridiculous at times. I think not every, a lot of things are not like therapy. It's not like therapy. Mm-hmm. It's as you're, as you have done, there are, there's training, yes. um, you know, for this particular kind of modality and for other modalities to bring more of the body mm-hmm. in there's training and there is science. I yeah. love that you bring the science and the other piece that I, that I hear you talking about, Tammy, is it's important to let people know, here's the benefit, mm-hmm. it, you know, it, it, it's, there's a, a whole emotional component and we can think that that's frivolous, you know, like you said that, mm-hmm. you know, cause it's not, but actually <laughs> who doesn't want, like if I bring this back to your, the people you serve in, you know, leaders, to have more calm and centeredness and to be able to not get triggered. And yeah. if you don't get triggered by the, the, you know, the people at the grocery store, <laughs> given their samples, it, you know, that, that, what that says to me is that also transmits over to a business, how you're running yeah. your business, how you're interacting with people. You can yeah. hold that leadership position yeah, it translates. Uh, what would to the you say, room. like more carefully or more? What? How would you? How do you see this helping? Like, get, I mean, I I don't know if I if, if this is putting you on the spot, but like a tangible. 
example of when we do body work or other kinds of work with, with clients. And so for you specifically about the yeah. breath work, what's something that that's it's very helpful? tangible. You can show up with more executive presence in that boardroom because you're showing up. You've let go of things that don't serve you. You're working through doing the shadow work. You're working with your therapist. You're working with me. Potentially some people don't have therapists. They just do breath work. So when you show up, you're calm. So what is executive presence? It's showing up in a calm, confident manner and reacting to things in a very calm and I would call it emotionally regulated manner. Mm. Breathwork enables me to do that and not be as reactive to what's going on around me. And it could be just you go in with the intention of just learning how to accept yourself for who you are. Mm -hmm. It could be as simple as that. And you come wow. away thinking, you know what? Yeah, I uh, my intuition told me I'm fine doing it this way or that way. I'm perfect as I am, right? Um, and I want to make a tie with what you've just said. We, we, mm -hmm. a lot of coaches talk about helping their clients with confidence. Yeah. And I think, again, it can seem like what we're talking about is very, what I think of as maybe masculine, like achieving a mm -hmm. goal and nothing wrong with that. I love achieving goals. But what I hear you bringing here is that there is a, a truth that the true confidence comes when we trust ourselves Yep. We know that our way is going to work just fine. And yep. there's some other piece there that you, that you brought in. There is something about accepting oneself and really right. <laughs> that when we work with more than just the mind as coaches, we can actually help our clients. Yeah. Bring more of who they are to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then let's just, let's just play this out a minute. Um, what, what's the impact then on the people that th these leaders serve? Yeah. So it's clear if you're showing up with trust in yourself, you're going to build trust in your staff mm -hmm. because you're coming in calm. You're coming in centered, unreactive. They'll feel like you're more approachable that maybe you're more open to ideas. You'll likely be more engaging to your staff. If you're more accepting to ideas, I mean, it's not, I just want to be clear. Breathwork is not a pariah. Like, I'm sorry, it's not a panacea for all things. It's not going to fix all things. But, but the direct impact is that when you show up to work, calmer, more centered, more confident, your staff will be calmer, more centered, more confident, and therefore more productive. And if you're more open and more engaging as a leader, guess what happens? Your staff are more open and engaging, which means less presenteeism, less absenteeism. There's more mm -hmm. productivity. Um, it, it's just everything. It's like one big system that it's like a, I consider organizations and our leadership as a big system, a wheel with spokes. And if one yes. spokes off kilter, then your wheel doesn't turn right. It bumps every so often. Whereas if you do breath work or you do other, it could be meditation too. Like it's oh, breath yeah. work isn't everything, yeah. whatever your modality, right. You're, you're helping to essentially strengthen those spokes in a way that is, intrinsic and follows your values, your aligns with who you are. I, I, I just think it's so important for leaders now and the world needs healing right now. Yeah. And I feel like this is a, there's, there's an openness to this kind of work. I think people really are starting to open their minds and their hearts to the notion that maybe just maybe I want to try something else. This you know, is um, really good news mm -hmm. uh, for the world. It's good yes. news for coaches. Because I do, you know, this is the work I do, helping yeah. coaches in their business. Like, how do you, how do you really bring about change for people? And then how do you present it? And you have brought some brilliant things um, here today, Tammy, because really, you, you. I just love how you, yeah. you, you bring the intellectual. I hear the really solid, like you've just made a very convincing case to me. If, if I'm a, an executive leader or anybody like I want to have that kind of impact, right? Most mm -hmm. of us do. We want to have that impact on the people, uh, in our lives where we're calling, really calling out the best in them. Mm -hmm. And this is that wonderful circle that coaching is. It's like, you know, we have to grow ourselves and there's some healing that mm -hmm. we also have to do Yeah, that can be done, uh, through coaching, not yes. just, right. We think of healing as, again, we think of it as, um, you know, in therapy land, but, but, but what you're bringing here today 
for coaches is that's part of our job as well is to help our clients to heal and grow and become um, a better version of themselves. Yeah. I think the most important message or key takeaway I tell my, my clients is, you know, this is not a therapy session. However, the, the modalities are so closely entwined and linked together and support each other that as coaches, as least, at least myself, I can speak for myself is I feel that I feel like I'm a part of their healthcare team as a coach because mm-hmm. psychological safety, psychological wellness is what we do in our work. And it doesn't mean that you're doing mental health care. That's different but you're supporting their wellness by helping them build their confidence. You're supporting their wellness by helping them um, find their voice and to take a step forward or to take that action step they've been putting off. Like maybe they've been wanting a promotion, but they've been like, oh, I don't want to compete. Oh, I'm not going to submit. You know, there's, there's all sorts of evidence that suggests that women will only submit an application when they have 80 or more percent of the requirements of the job post, or as men on average, I think it's something like 40%. So if men see 40, I got 40% of this, I'm going to compete. Whereas women are like, no, I gotta, I gotta wait till I have 80 or 90% of the required. And it's like, no, you need to have the confidence to step forward. And, and I just love, I love that this along with the breath work that I'm bringing in now is just, it's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. It's, it it is beautiful, Tammy. It's beautiful Mm -hmm. to watch you bring, bring this passion of yours, this knowing you have of how it really, really helps. I mean, this is, again, you have uh, the, the head part, you have, you know, you bring your intelligence, but there's that heart that I feel from you. Here's one last question um, for coaches. So, Mm -hmm. so what, what encouragement can you give the coaches out there who want to do something like this, but they're like, Oh no, it'll never work my clients will never go for it. Well, I mean, they can reach out to me and have a session and see what it feels like. Uh They can actually be trained themselves. I I can refer them to my mentor if they want to be trained in breath work. She's taking applications on a regular basis for this. If this is something that interests you, if you're not interested in doing something like this, but you really want to bring this to your clients, I would suggest it doesn't have to be me. It could be anyone who does this kind of work. You can collaborate with them and, and and coordinate the services you're providing to your clients so that you can together masterfully bring your clients over that finish line or get them to level up in a way that maybe they are struggling with. Mm. Um, but do your research, you know, read up on this. And there are breathwork exercises that you can do with your clients that do not require a lot of training. The reason why I do training on this is because there are contraindications. This kind of breathwork is not for everybody. There are physical and medical contraindications to doing the work I do and so there's a clear intake process for me but there are breathwork exercises like breathing in through the nose for four in five out you can you can teach your clients to Mm. use your nasal breathing to trigger the parasympathetic nervous system which calms everything down so when they're in a meeting and they're triggered and stressed out they can start breathing through their nose and as they breathe in they can ask themselves a simple question they're mad and they're thinking what is my truth maybe they feel attacked what's my truth and breathe out, I'm going to you know, breathe out the anger and the frustration. There's things we can do as coaches to bring in these extra modalities to support the client um, experience. Yes. Um, yeah. So really it's about doing the research, find something that works for you as a coach that you're comfortable implementing and just inc- and bring it in and see what the client does. And bring it in. And that's where I want to, you know, yeah. that's where we're going to bring this home, um, Tammy. Cause that's yeah. what I've seen you do. You're like, okay, I believe in this. I'm doing so, it. So for coaches out there, you can contact <laughs> Tammy. You could, yeah. you know, all the advice that she's given, but, but, but just decide that you're going to do it. If you need to partner with someone and, um, trust. So this is, again, it's like, I see you trusting yourself with this. And I love that you are a, a spokesperson, um, for these women and this combination of modalities that you brought together. I believe that it is needed in this world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, Tammy's information, sure, her information, it's all along with this, um, the, the podcast information. And thank you so much, Tammy, for being Thanks on the show today. Me. You just brought a, a beautiful message. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you. All righty. Thank you.